So Patti LuPone originated the role, oh. but then Glenn Close sweeps in, oh. and she's all like, ready for my close up, Mr. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Trip, how you doing? Wrong. Yeah, I, what are you doing? You are in your 30s. Why are you wailing and flailing like a teenager? I was just ambushed by the three things I hate the most. Cheesy acting, tacky choreography, and horrendous singing. And, and the worst part is it was also so catchy. Uh, okay, well, calm down, calm down. It's all over now. You're fine. No, no. I brought this on myself. I was a... Crazy, reckless, slut. Oh! oh somebody's in there and I want to so Oh, you're so glamorous and beautiful. That'll make you feel better. <laughs> what happened to our trip? Our rock trip supremo. I grew up. Well, grow back down again. You can't run away from camp. You can't run, you can't hide from these songs in your head all night. Ooh, see that bird, watch that street, dig in the camp and queens. <laughs> Come on, Trip, get into it. We gotta dance, buddy. <laughs> Tuesday night and the bars are closed. Looking for an unthinking show A show with well-known music And disco in its veins You've come to shut off your brain Movie stars will try to croon But the music's up the way out of tune With a bit of Swedish pop music And three bottles of red wine you're in the mood for Baranski And that weird flipper dance It's all just camp and queens Middle-aged women acting seventeen You'll need codeine When Brosnan's voice makes you want to scream Oh God! But you can't run, you can't hide Half a song's in your head for life Ooh, see that bird Watch that street Dig into camp and queen <laughs> oh. oh. Mamma mia Exactly Stealing Broadway babies. I'm Gerald. I'm Emily. And I'm Trip. And welcome to Stealing Focus. The show where we compare TV and movie musicals to their source material. And rating them on their own merits. To define whether or not, once and for all, they live up to our lofty expectations as true aficionados of the Great White Way. We'll be looking at the moments that are already standing off. Yes! yes! A slow clap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or a carry the musical. Boom! <laughs> So let's talk about jukebox musicals. This very specific kind of show takes popular songs that were previously released and adapts them into a coherent musical theater piece. Ah, the history of the jukebox musical. Take songs from a specific genre or era and fashion a show around it, like Rock of Ages with 80s glam rock or Forever Plaid with 50s men's groups. Or you can take the catalog of songs from a specific artist and create a whole new show around them. Like the Beach Boys with uh, Good Vibrations, or Elvis Presley with Oh Shook Up. But are jukebox musicals any good? Well, sometimes, but mostly no. And the show that really kicked off this lazy musical theater trend is 1999's Mamma Mia! Featuring the songs of ABBA! This show was so huge. I mean, probably more big than you can imagine. The musical opened in London's West End in 1999, where it was just such a big hit. The Brits like weird musicals. I know. Um, 
We could do a whole episode of West End versus Broadway. Although it would really just be about Andrew Lloyd Webber. Okay, all right, all right, all right. And it moved to the Winter Garden Theater in New York City in 2001. It ran in NYC for 14 years, making it the eighth longest running show in Broadway history. In a lot of ways, for better or worse, Mamma Mia solidified the tourist musical theater genre. Catchy, familiar songs that anyone in the world could recognize, a simple enough plot that can be understood in any language, flashy costumes, men in speedos, women in borderline drag. It's a very silly show. But you know, if you're coming to New York City for a week and you don't know anything about musical theater and you really want the luxury of saying, well, I've been to a Broadway show, then... Well, like cats before it. Mamma Mia was there. Yeah, last time I was there, Mamma Mia was offering free Wi-Fi in every seat. That's the kind of show we're talking about here. Patty would not have approved. Stop! 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 Taking pictures! Right now! <laughs> you heard the announcement? Who do you think you are? <laughs> but hey, we're here to talk about the movie, right? Yes, indeed. But here's the one thing that truly boggles my mind. This 2008 film adaptation was just as big, maybe even bigger than the stage production. Yeah, sure, it got a mixed critical reception, but the film only cost $52 million to make. It ended up making over $600 million! It's one of the best-selling DVDs of all time! And there was a time, less than 10 years ago, when you couldn't walk through a gayborhood without hearing a late-night sing-along. It was inescapable. And of course, the film was granted a sequel. Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, yes, that is the title, is set to be released in summer of 2018. So, so it must be good, right? Right? Oh, Chikatita. Did you just call me a banana? Let's take a look. First of all, there is a reason ABBA stands the test of time. These songs are catchy, and they are just really easy to sing along to. Yeah, and the whole story takes place around a wedding, which makes a lot of sense. Think about it. Where do you hear ABBA songs the most? Wedding, wedding receptions. receptions. And your drunk aunt loves it, and she loves this movie. And not just because of the songs. Mamma Mia! is the rare film that focuses on the lives and loves of middle-aged women, even if sometimes they act like teenage twits, but more on that later. So, familiar pop songs from the 70s, and the cast of beloved actors of a certain age, and a film with remarkably simple, easy-to-imitate choreography. No wonder the Drunk Mom movie sing-alongs were so popular! <laughs> and as usual, one of the most solid things about this film is the cast. Stupid as it is, Mamma Mia! has some good performances. Christine Baranski and Julie Walters are a hoot. Dominic Cooper is hot. Plus, they're all competent singers, especially Baranski, who falls back on her extensive musical theater background to confidently belt to the rafters. She's in her element here. Julie Walters singing Take a Chance on Me with Stellan Skarsgård is fun. Even though they don't set up a romance, or even a flirtation between them at all, and it comes out of nowhere. But still, what could it go? I love Skarsgård and Colin Firth. I mean, like, come on, who doesn't want a cute gay Colin Firth as your dad? I do, I do. Yeah, uh -huh. and even I will say it, all hail Queen Meryl. <sighs> yeah, yeah, she gets some flack from musical theater purists who say she can't sing well enough, but give me an actor who sings over a singer who acts any day. Meryl is committing 100% to this silly, Silly movie, and she makes you care about these monumentally low stakes. I like her voice, Emily. Yeah, me too, Gerald. Plus, haters, every true Sondheim aficionado knows that Meryl was in the original 1974 Yale swimming pool cast of The Frogs. So yeah, she's been in a musical before. But do you know who my favorite is? Amanda Seyfried. <sighs> Agreed, Gerald. She cares, and she wants to do a good job. She has great chemistry, and her singing works. Unlike her performance in another movie musical, mm -hmm. 
The role of Sophie is right in her mezzo-soprano sweet spot. And even when the singing isn't so great, every single actor is giving it their all. They know it's silly in camp, but they're committing to it. No one looks embarrassed to be there, which is a good thing. It is, especially since the audience looks pretty embarrassed to be watching them. Okay, I know this movie is just an excuse to hear ABBA songs, but there are so many times in Mamma Mia when people just don't act like human beings. Call me crazy, but if I haven't talked to someone in 20 years, I'm not traveling to a remote Greek island to see them. Also, it takes Meryl till the end of the film to realize that her daughter invited the three exes to the wedding. Seriously! Who else could it have been? Meryl's reaction to finding out her exes are on the island is remarkably bizarre. First, she realizes they're all hiding in her goat house, and instead of going to them, she sings while creeping around on the roof. She goes from smiling on the roof to weeping when she confronts them. And what's with biting her knuckle? Is it a silent movie in 1932? It's such a jarring beat change, I just don't know how it could ever seem natural. Well, and see, what I can't get past is that Meryl tells her daughter at one point that she got kicked out of the house for getting pregnant with her 20 years ago. In 2008, when Mamma Mia came out, Meryl Streep was 57 years old, which means her character was kicked out of the house at age 37. Okay, now I know Meryl is playing a character in her 40s, and yes, of course, she's Meryl Streep. She looks amazing. She doesn't look like she's an ancient old crone or anything. But you know what? She's Meryl Streep. We all know she's older than 40 because she's been in our collective consciousness for over 40 years. Why would her mother care about her adult daughter getting pregnant? At 37. Why would her mother care about that? And what is she still doing living at her mother's house anyway? And some of these songs are so shoehorned in, it's ridiculous. I mean, Meryl Streep says one line about how she spends a lot of money on her quaint Greek B&B, and then we abruptly segue into a tacky dream sequence with her living the good life on a yacht. Hmm. I'm starting to see why gay men like this musical. And there are so many minor eye roll moments. Tell him about the internet. He's gonna put me on the line. Oh, movie. 2008 is a little late for that joke. <laughs> oh my god, they aren't even trying here. Seriously, not one good wig? Okay, 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 what is this? What is this? I thought I was watching a movie musical. Why are the ensemble dance numbers so simple? This is armography at best. Yeah, what is this? High school musical? Oh my god, that reminds me. There is this minor backstory about Meryl being in a pop girl group back in the day, but literally the only reason it's there is to give Streep, Walters, and Bransky excuses to doll themselves up in their gaudiest pantsuits and sing songs that couldn't have possibly fit into the plot. Super Trooper, Waterloo, these songs add nothing to the story, and they just waste our time. I feel like the end credit to the film are what everyone really wanted. Get all the stars in these horrible costumes and just, just watch them go. Yep. Yep, yep, that's a future Academy Award winner, Colin Firth. Right there. There he is. And that says it all, folks. The gods just trolled you. And they'll be doing it again, I'm sure, when Mamma Mia, Here, Here We Go, go again, again, is released. Cher is playing Seyfried's grandmother. She's only three years older than Meryl. Ugh, Hollywood is the worst. He's just screaming! Who gave him his voice lessons, Gerard Butler? I don't have words. If there was choreography, this flipper dance would be fabulously stupid. But instead, it's just 
stupid. Oh my god, it's so stupid! And if Brosnan's screeching and the unfathomable flipper dance doesn't break you, the sound of screeching women will! Okay, I buy it with Safe Reed and her friends because they're 20 and 20 year olds are like that, okay? I get it. But when we get the exact same scene immediately after with Marilyn and her girlfriends, I just, I can't, I, what? I can't. Well, perhaps they're drawing a parallel, like mother, like daughter, that kind of thing. Okay, I, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is this. <laughs> shorthand is such a pet peeve for me, and it's always done with female characters. Hey, guess what? Real friends don't have to do that when they're reunited. They hug and laugh and, I don't know, talk, but they don't recite cute poems like a bunch of cheerleaders. And it just goes on and on and on. That being said, Mamma Mia is a guilty pleasure. It's not a great film, it's not even a good film, but it is watchable, and dare I say it, sometimes it's even enjoyable. Guilty pleasure flicks for women tend to get a bad rap, even though there are tons of movies like that for men. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Emily. Yeah, men don't have any equivalent to those silly chick flicks. <laughs> oh, really? What are your favorite movies again? Showgirls. Starship Troopers. Oh, 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 oh! Commando! Remember when I said I'd kill you last? I lied. Get a job, Roger! You are the worst roommate ever! I'm an artist. <laughs> anyway, you might have a point there, Emily. That's right, Gerald. Ain't nothing wrong with a little female wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I want to do uh, at the beginning is I think I want to close on you, Gerald. Okay. Can you make a note of that? No. Um, and then I you know, I really want to have a. Oh my. Tony Awards and the biggest stars 
and put it on screen exactly like it was on stage. It'll be a guaranteed hit. But now it isn't true